brighten up those dark mornings. Wheeler, Ollie, and Lecter. Mornings at the cabin. It's like a warm minus 21, you know? It's not a cold minus 21. It's quite a warm one. Got yeah. out this morning. I was like, oh, this is great. This is, we're well into spring. Yeah, it's not a minus 21. Feels like minus 43. We're doing all right. Yeah, it's minus 21. Feels like minus 21, which is yeah. which is very reassuring. Very doable. Uh, welcome to rectangular February, everybody. Did you know that? Huh? Rectangular February. What's that about? Well, starts on a Monday and it ends on a Sunday. It's a perfectly rectangular in your calendar. Assuming that, like any other normal oh. human being, your your week starts on a Monday. Yeah, I realize there is some argument over this. I don't know why. It's ridiculous. There are some Sunday believers out there. Oh, yeah. Like, let me tell you right now, the week does not start on a Sunday. Who do you know that starts a new week on a Sunday? You don't know anybody. Don't try and convince me otherwise. They're basically flat earthers. Yeah, come on. Yeah. So it's a rectangular February. Starts on Monday the 1st, ends on Sunday the 28th. Yeah, Google Calendar doesn't work with that. Yeah? Uh, no? No. What do you mean? Uh, there's like a, the 28th is just one, you know, block down. How can the 28th be one block down? It's a, they can't just mess with the week like it's that. It's the Monday-Sunday thing. Really? Yeah, it's messing with You that. can change that in the settings somewhere. Don't let Google Calendar oh. get in the way of a good rectangular February. All right. Ah, mornings of the Cabin brought to you by Aurora Ford driving the north. And this morning brought to you by Knack and Wesley Hardesty, who is playing Roots to Wings, a showcase sharing music from his new EP, Hidden Home. That is taking place live on the 4th, later on this week, on Thursday. And then it's going to be on Saturday night on Womp and Knack's Facebook pages and Northwest Hill Community TV, February the 6th at 7.30pm this Saturday. Wes Hardesty on the show a little bit later on this morning. Good morning, everybody. Welcome to your, I don't know, oblong week in rectangular February. Mornings at the Cabin, the podcast. Welcome along, everybody. Brand new week. Ollie and Lecter with you. Wheeler is elsewhere this morning, but we hope he's looking after himself and all tucked up nice and warm, listening to the show as he always does attentively anytime he isn't actually here in the studio. Lecter, we have uh, exciting news because it is February. That is, of course, the month of love, the rectangular month of love, as we've established. And that can never be allowed to pass by on Cabin Radio without us doing something to acknowledge that we are a bastion of love. Yes. You know, we, we, yes. we wholeheartedly promote love in all its forms, and we like to do that by giving stuff away primarily. We have got a contest going on. Tell me more. So, you may remember last year we brought you the awful, terrible, no good date stories, and it was sponsored by Flowers North and Great Slave Gifts, and we gave away a bouquet of flowers from Flowers North and a uh, Valentine's Day gift basket from Great Slave Gifts. They are back on board, but we've made it even better Ooh. this year. Ooh. You've got flowers from Flowers North, a Valentine's Day gift basket from Great Slave Gifts, and dinner for two at the legendary Bullock's Bistro. Ooh. And once again, all you have to do is uh, share a little embarrassment with us. <laughs> you don't even have to read it live on the air. You can just write it, and we will read it for you, possibly in a silly voice. If you don't want a silly voice, we can read it in a serious voice, which might make it even funnier. Um... Yeah, Valentine's Day at the Cabin, 2021. Very exciting. That is very exciting. I've already done my my stupid, silly, very bad date story uh, last time around, and I, I have yet to go on enough dates to sort of add to that list, which is probably a good thing. What was your silly, awful no-good oh, date story? Oh, must we? Uh, I mean, the, like, I'll, all I'm thinking of right now that, that's coming up to mind is uh, is you getting stood up by a, a soon-to-be supermodel. Oh, no, eventually no, Eventually no. to be super bummed. I mean, that wasn't great. That can, can you count dates where the other person doesn't show up? I mean, I, I feel I like mean, that's a standing start, isn't there, it? I there mean, was an intention. Okay, yeah. <laughs> right, well, well if, if it's just the intention to date, I've been on a lot of those. <laughs> been on a lot of those. Um, no, this was the one where, oh, uh, this is a long story, but they tried to cut this long story short. I was kind of sort of dating a woman back in London. This is a long time ago. This is like 12, 13 years ago now. Okay. Uh, who I was not dating a woman. This is bringing back memories. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Well, I, I, I often did that, <laughs> and and it, it wasn't going overly well. I was sort of uh, feeling oh, feeling that like, you know you remember, remember this now, yeah. Now. And I yeah. basically texted a friend to say, "Look, yes. tonight's date better be pretty sensational, otherwise right. that's that." And accidentally sent that text to her, to her to oh. to the woman I was dating, uh. um, to the point where. Uh, she turned up at the restaurant and hadn't checked her phone yet. Yeah, this is back in like 2008 when people didn't routinely check their phone every eight seconds. Right. And yeah. she put her phone on the table in front of her and I physically grabbed the phone, deleted the message off it and put it back, said nothing. 
Um, I got away with that until three days later when I then texted my friend again and said, uh, you know what, I think that was pretty terrible. Going to have to end it. And then sent that text message to to the woman, Jess, right. instead. Right. And and that was the end of that. That yeah. second text, that that hit home even if the first one didn't. Uh, so, so it's really less that the date was terrible and more that my ability to operate a phone and my brain simultaneously. Yeah, more just you being terrible. a terrible date, not yeah, so me, much the yeah, date. Oh, oh, I was absolutely the terrible yeah. date. Yeah, no. <laughs> and believe me, that is not in question. I was the terrible date. Uh, if you've got anything remotely like that, you can feel free to be like me and, and you know, you can be the one at fault for the terrible date. Uh, the other person could be at fault for the terrible date. Obviously, you can find it in your heart, I'm sure, to be relatively uh, uh, graceful and gracious about that and, and obscure their identifying information yeah. while still making clear that they were terrible. The beautiful thing about this contest, too, is it doesn't even have to be a story pertaining to your current significant no. other. You, it could be an awful date story about someone you dated years and years ago, and your current significant other can take advantage, reap the rewards of you previously being a horrible date. Might even be better that way. It probably is. Yeah. 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 Throw someone from the past under the bus here. Let's let's play this one wisely. Although we had a couple good stories last year. I we were trying to remember some of them, but we I, I know we had a couple good stories where by the end of it, even though it was like just an awful like fiasco of a date, by the end they were like, and now we've been happily married for twenty seven years. Yeah. Uh, I don't. I don't uh, think the Walmart campout story was one of those ones. I, oh, I don't think no, that it was wasn't. a happily it, married. Yeah, but I remember that. Yeah, where yeah. the date was that they were taken to go camping. Yeah. in the Walmart parking lot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, that can't end well. You, and you can't top that. I don't think. No. Well, give it a shot, though. Give it a shot. Yeah. Uh, how do people enter? People enter. By emailing your awful date stories to mailbox at cabinradio.ca. You can send a Facebook but say Facebook message to the Cabin Radio Facebook page. We'll also be uh, starting this week. You'll see it promoted all over our social media. So feel free if it's just easier to uh, leave a comment with a uh, potentially long-winded date story in there. <laughs> that's fine as well. However you can get a hold of us, we will find it and we will read your awful date stories on the air. Cannot wait. You are listening to Mornings at the Cabin. Cabin Radio's morning show podcast. All the best chat, none of the embarrassing mistakes. I saw, I often, I often see this actually. I see weather forecasters on Twitter. Southern weather forecasters mm. will occasionally name check Yellowknife when they just need to remind their local audience that it could be worse. Oh, okay. Yeah. And, and you'll just see a tweet will pop up because I have a search set up for Yellowknife so that I don't miss anyone mentioning Yellowknife in any right. context. Yeah. And every now and again, a weather forecaster for some you know, NBC affiliate somewhere in the States or something pops yeah. up. And Rochester. Like, well, in Yellowknife today, it's like <laughs> minus 18. And I had to write to one at the weekend and say, look, you realize this is skiing weather, right? Yeah. Did you see what it was like last week? Like, we've oh just come God. out of minus 35. Yeah. Here. Like, we're going to take minus 18 all the way to the bank. Like, <laughs> let's not be holding that up as any great example of how on earth are these people surviving. Like, this is great. Yeah. Oh yeah, I, I've seen I've seen other places uh, often name check Mars before they name check Yellowknife in a temperature comparison. Have you ever seen that other places like even just like Winnipeg, where you know you expect it to be cold to a certain degree? You get these like ludicrous headlines where it's like Winnipeg today colder than Mars. <laughs> Like it's like minus thirty five. Yeah, that that's too bad. Who's the guy on Mars with the weather station I, set up? I don't know, but. Yeah. Uh, He's cold. Let me tell you. Poor fella. Yeah. They kept that one quiet. That yeah. manned mission got away. <laughs> He's like, you should have seen our weather last week. <laughs> it was like minus 63. Sure weren't skiing then. Uh, by the way, skiing on Mars, that is a lot of fun. Oh, I would imagine, yeah. yeah. Yeah, even I, hopefully, would be able to remain upright for quite some time. You yeah. would hope in like a 20th of Earth's gravity. Yeah. You know? I think you'd yeah. be all right. Suddenly, I'm motivated to hang on just long enough for, like, you know, mass human transit to other planets to be a thing. Yeah, get a hold of Elon. You'll be uh, <laughs> skiing on the red planet in no time. Uh, there's, there's today's podcast title. Uh, welcome along, everybody. Uh, we actually weren't going to talk about skiing on Mars, funnily enough. Shocking. Yeah. We were instead going to talk about Alice Toir, uh, who, who just likes skiing on Mars, is quite the human achievement. And uh, we wanted to pass on a big congratulations to Alice. Uh, because Alice has abandoned cabin radio, <laughs> uh, tossed cabin radio aside, plunged cabin radio into the dirt and said, see you suckers, I'm off to the CBC. Yeah, she's off to the Seebs. Good for you, Alice. Yeah. Fantastic stuff. So Alice is, uh, if you don't know who Alice is, then, you know, you clearly, clearly you're a rookie around these parts. But Alice Toir is uh, the 
cabin radio superhuman intern who, over the course of what must be three summers now, has uh, just been outstanding as a journalist who hasn't even bothered going to journalism school yet, yeah. and yet yeah. somehow is still, at the age of 18, a very well-rounded and, and exceptional journalist. Which was quite the benefit when Alice turned up a couple of years ago and just sort of said, hey, can I... Oh, she came to the first trade show that we ever uh, yes, came to. right. I remember yeah. this. I thought she was a first recruit, wasn't she? Yeah. 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 She just turned up at the trade show and basically said, hey, I'd like to be an intern. And we looked at each other and said, well, there aren't really... We don't do internships. And she just looked back and like, well, I still <laughs> want to be one. She looked at you yeah. like, no, no, uh, no hesitation. Just make it happen. I want an internship. She's very convincing. Yeah. Very convincing in that sort of, I feel like my mind has been manipulated sort of way. Yeah. Yeah. And lo and behold, there were internships all of a sudden because Alice had decreed that we make them for her. And She's a she, trailblazer. Yeah. She turned up and, and aced it to the point where we all looked around and said, we should definitely get more interns. And and now we've got a bunch more interns that we hired all those ones. We just can't say no is <laughs> really the problem. Then we thought, can we get more Alice's? Yeah. Uh, nothing against, you know, any other interns, but... Alice just does everything right, does everything well, just has a mind for this sort of thing. And I guess this is kind of uh, obvious in the fact that, as you mentioned, she has never gone to journalism school and yet has been headhunted by CBC for yeah. an intern internship. I mean, and, which, to, to the best of my knowledge, they've created in order to accommodate her. Yeah. Uh, I'm not sure they were particularly planning on having one until the opportunity arose, and now they're hiring Alice for three months, which is fantastic. And it is, yeah. Much, much as we may joke about uh, abandoning us, I, I am very like. It's great to get experience at different newsrooms, different yeah. work settings, things oh, like yeah. that. Yeah, realize how nice it is over it. Um, <laughs> no, no, okay. Um, <laughs> and uh, <laughs> and and also just yeah, get all that experience before you go to J school. I mean, frankly, Alice, why bother going to J school at this point? Well, really. Like, yeah, it's... I mean, there are like professional trained journalists up here who would love the opportunity to go work for CBC. Yeah. And may never get that call. And uh, meanwhile, Alice Twa just, you know, they sought her out. Yeah. And she had, she gave, she I think she probably gave them a. Yeah, all right. Yeah, sure. Why not? Yeah, I'm free to go. Let me just the sound of a calendar flipping in the background. Like, yeah. Yeah. I can squeeze that in. I think she can call her shots, though. Like, I, th I think if she was to go to CBC and we were like, Alice, you know, ask them if you can still, like, do some stuff for the cabin, you know, here and there. I, I think she could she could call her shots with CBC. Think, um, you, think, you think if she went in there and she was like, you know what, I still want to, like, just every once in a while just do something for cabin because, you know, the those guys have been so great to me and it's so fun there and they're so cool and so wonderful. You know, who wouldn't want to come back, right? And you think they're going to say no? How could they say no? She can't got, say no to Alice Twat. She's got all the power. Only Laura McGinnis has ever been able to exercise that right before at yeah. the CBC. Right. Yeah. Lauren and Alice joining an exclusive club of people who can just any time they like go and have, you know, a minute or two and, and, and just sneak on over to Cabin Radio. If Unky Lauren can do it, Unky Lauren Alice can do it. Twa can do it. Unky Lauren and Alice Twa, what a dream team that's going right? to be. Right. I might listen to their morning show. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> ah, mornings at the Cabin. Enjoy as while you can. Mornings at the Cabin. The podcast where we cut out all the great music and you're left with the rest. This edition of Mornings at the Cabin is brought to you by two lovely entities. First of all, Aurora Ford driving the north. And second of all, Knack and Wesley Hardesty, who is playing his Roots to Wings show, an EP release for Hitting Home, the new EP. There is a live performance coming up on Thursday evening. You can get tickets for that on Knack's website. And you can also watch this on Saturday evening. It's going to be on Northwest Hill Community TV at 7.30 p.m., and on the Nag and Womp Facebook pages as well. We were hoping to have Wesley on the show. It hasn't happened, but we can still tell you that it's a fun old experience watching these things on the on the, the old telly box. Uh, we did that on Saturday night. We rearranged the cabin radio living area, and we made a, a nice little uh, cinematic experience. Yeah, it was a lovely night supporting our uh, our good friend Jimmy T. Yeah. Jimmy T and the Sociables, of course, played Friday night and uh, rebroadcast uh, Saturday night at 7.30. Did did you hear what was going on with Northwest Hell? Because you mentioned during that night you got a a, a strange text from yeah from I, Jimmy. I, the, I, I had a texted uh, yeah 
sort of complaint from Jimmy that I happened to mention Northwest Tell TV, but it was somewhat <laughs> vague on details, and so I couldn't tell you. The Facebook feed was great. The Facebook feed was fine. Yeah, yeah absolutely. So, uh, so if you know Northwest Tell TV is your is your main go to, and doesn't work out, you do have other options. But uh, nevertheless, yeah, you can watch the replay of uh, Wesley Hardesty's show as well. I, I did enjoy your description of Jimmy T's show on Saturday. I think you were the one who said. Uh, the the knack theater for a, a Saturday night East Coast party with Jimmy T was not his home <laughs> rink. Yeah, I think is how you phrased it. Yeah, yeah. He, uh, I thought he did well in the circumstances to yeah. to adapt that, and it was a fun show. But yeah, for sure, it, it didn't quite have the uh, the full flavor of the Black Knight at eleven thirty p.m. Yeah, with you know the the eleven resident newfies. No tables uh, in front of people to pound on. No, right? No, yeah. and no spoons that I could hear no being passed around. No. You can't pass around spoons these days. No, that's right. Goodness, there's yeah. no passing of spoons. That's the first thing Cabby Candola said. There's a what? There's a pandemic. Well, we better ban the spoons. <laughs> Get those spoons out of here. No communal spoons. So, uh, yeah, it was a great show. And I'm really looking forward to this one as well. I, I almost feel like maybe this is going to become a thing that we sort of get around the old... Uh, yeah, the Saturday evenings near the beer fridge. Yeah, with the uh, with the Knack show. What an uh, all star lineup Wesley has uh, performing with him too. Like, yeah. Uh, so, so his show performing uh, to to celebrate his uh, his brand new EP Roots to Wings. He's got Andrea Betker, uh, Ben Russo, who's just I guess playing his weekly show yeah. at the Knack. But uh, <laughs> it's it's not music in the Northwest Territories if Ben Russo is not in it. That's right. right. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, the legendary Pat Braden, of course, and mm-hmm. uh, Al B on drums. That's a uh, that's a good lineup. That is a really solid lineup. It, it looks like this is going to be a ton of fun as well. Good on Knack for getting these things together. Absolutely. And making sure that we're still getting stuff out the door. Because even though they are having to work under some pretty restrictive criteria. I mean, don't get me wrong. I understand why. I'm not complaining about it. But it doesn't make it doesn't make life easy for Knack no. by any means. No. Uh, the 50 capacity that they got to work with. Uh, you can get tickets for the event itself. So if you want to go see Wes Hardesty in person... It's Thursday night at 7.30. You just go to the NAC website and hit buy ticket. To the best of my knowledge, they're not sold out yet, but obviously there is a restriction on capacity. So it, you know, I realize the usual yellow knife approach to these things is to wait till approximately 11 minutes before the show starts and then buy the tickets. I don't know that that's going to work for you this time around. Probably not. Yeah. No. If you want to go watch the show, go get the tickets right now because there's not that many of them and you don't want to miss out. And if you don't get a chance to go or you do miss out on tickets then yeah it's gonna be on video on saturday night i also gotta say i thought that uh, uh whoever was producing it i think it was a pedo thing with a womp bit of womp thrown in as well right uh womp was certainly the ones facebook streaming it uh, it was a really nicely produced little show as well a few yeah. different camera angles they yeah. they put some some real effort into making it a, a nice show to watch yeah i think uh against their their better judgment i think jimmy convinced them to uh to put some crowd shots in there which of course as as we just mentioned you know is reduced to 50 in-house so when you've got the knack theater which is capacity normally much larger than 50 and then you show a crowd shot he had the house lights up and everything uh again probably against their better judgment but jimmy can't play unless he could see people's faces yep and there were like five of them out there and you're like ah, <laughs> all right then what they should do now i, I i'm sure that- in the Premier League soccer, they do this. I'm sure in the NHL, they've done it as well. They've put big sort of graphic wraps over the seats. Right. Right? Yeah, yeah. To sort of just provide messages, just to make it look less like empty seats. Yeah. Knack should totally start doing that. Oh. Just have a massive graphic wrap over the empty seats that says, like, go, musician of the day. <laughs> That's an extra sponsorship opportunity right there. Yeah. yeah. Encore, brought to you by Cabin Radio. Yeah. Yeah. That's right. Nice. All right. We should talk to Knack and say, look, how much do you want for us to be able to put some comedic rap of the week? Yeah. Yeah, just out there so that whichever whichever poor musician is up, where's hardest he looks out at the audience. We'll just fashion a little canvas cabin right in the middle nice. of the bleachers. With all of our yeah. faces looking out of it, watching the stage. Yeah. Yeah. Except everyone else wants the house lights down, so you probably won't see it. Yeah, nobody else will see it. <laughs> but, but whatever Jimmy plays, Jimmy would be like, oh, it's the guys. Oh, there we go. Hey, yeah. Gavin Radio's in the house. <laughs> yeah. All righty. Well, we've got a plan. We'll solve all your pandemic problems here at Cabin Radio. Please do go check out Wes Hardesty with Andrea Betka, Ben Russo, Pat Braden, and Al B. Playing Thursday night live. Go get your tickets at knacknt.ca. Or if you missed that out, go and watch it on your Saturday night on the Womp or Knack live streams instead. The Mornings at the Cabin podcast. I am awaiting with interest 
the results of a little blood sample test to find out if I have ever been exposed to COVID-19. Uh, did you see the video? I did, yeah. I actually just watched it this morning, finally. Ah. There's been a lot of buzz. I've heard a lot of people talk about it. <laughs> Even my mom just texted me the other day. She's just like, ah, I just watched Ollie's blood video. He cracks me up. Aw. <laughs> it's nice to know that I could bring a, bring a jaunty little smile to people's faces while bleeding out on camera in front of them. You needed a drum roll inserted in there for that uh, Canadian government bleeding Thank dry you. line. Thank was, you. Yeah. yeah. Or a rim shot. Sorry, that's the one I was looking for. Well, I had a drum roll. I'd have taken yeah. the drum roll. I'd have taken the lead up yeah. to it. He's going to do it. <laughs> this is going to be a gooder. You're going to want to enjoy this joke. Oh, he actually oh, wrote this one ahead of time. There he goes. <laughs> There's the delivery. Beautifully done. Round of applause to him. It was yeah, slightly obvious joke. All right. So if you're not aware of what we're talking about, the Federal Statistics Agency, Stats Canada, sent uh, a thousand different NWT residents alongside people in the rest of Canada a survey to fill out and a blood sample kit because they want to test a representative sample of people in Canada to find out who might have been exposed to COVID-19 without even knowing. Because, of course, you could have had a super mild case of COVID-19 and never even known, right? never got tested, yeah, and therefore wouldn't have a clue unless you have someone check your blood after the fact for the antibodies in it that would have been generated by the virus. And they could say, oh, hang on a minute. You've clearly, like, your body has reacted to COVID-19, even if you didn't even realize you were anywhere near it. Right. So that's the point of the test. Mm. But they did send this wonderful blood sample kit. I don't know how often the federal government sends bloodletting kits to its residents. First time I've seen it. Yeah. Uh, it, and it was very, uh, you go watch the video. It's on our Facebook page. It's on our website. But my, the most interesting thing for me was the fact that the federal government clearly felt it needed to go into overkill mode yes. for the protective equipment. Like, there were two gauze strips, two bandages, two alcohol swabs, a set of green rubber gloves in case you needed assistance, two of these little... I mean, I'd never even seen them before. Like, it, rather just like poking yourself with a needle, they gave you these very specific little devices right. that you rest on your finger and then you push a button and it just stabs you and then recoils forevermore and you you can never be stabbed by it again. Yeah. And it has to be disposed in a in a human waste sack that you then have to drop it into. Yeah. You know, and just just the federal government had clearly thought to itself, the last thing we need right now is for us to accidentally poison the blood of yes. thousands of our own residents. Yeah. yeah so yeah. let's just put all of the protective supplies we've ever made into one envelope yeah. and send it out to people. Yeah. I mean, you know, there's only so many supplies of uh, of the COVID-19 vaccine. They don't want to suddenly get overrun with requests for, for tetanus shots. So yeah. probably probably the best call to not just be like, uh, find, yourself, find something sharp to jab I, yourself with. Honestly, I... Maybe this is just maybe this is just how the Brits do it. I had assumed that that was gonna be the deal. I was <laughs> when I got the thing through the mail. I was like, I don't even know if I have a needle. And then it turned out that oh no, wait, never mind. They thought of this, right? Yeah, they're not expecting me to just go rummaging through a drawer. Yeah. And just oh, that'll do. Just find yourself a stray dog, tease it a little bit, <laughs> get a nip, and away you go. <laughs> Please use this rabies shot after your sample. <laughs> yeah. So then I send it away and uh, yeah. Put it away last week, and you fill out a little online form as well with all these questions. Like, although it was like it was a slightly confusing form because it was all based on the last six months. Right. Uh, like, yeah, I mean, I like. Have you traveled outside in the last six months? Have you done all this in the last six months? I'm like, no, I haven't done any of this stuff. But like, I did spend three weeks isolating in March last year at right. the height of all this stuff, having just traveled through the UK and then flown home with like a cough that wouldn't go away. Right. So I'm just saying, like, if we look a year ago, I've got stuff for you. Yeah. But there's nowhere on the form for this, so all right, fine. Uh, so I filled it out to the best of my ability, and we will see what it comes back with. I've got a, a friendly $5 bet going with Sarah Price. She's convinced that I've had COVID-19 and oh. that it will show up. Oh. She thinks the cough that I came back with was, COVID. was probably it. Oh. I'm pretty convinced it was But you got tested when you came back. I got tested twice, yeah. Yeah. and it came back negative both times. Equally, though, I got tested well after I had been feverish. Right. And when the cough was kind of like on its tail end. Right. Yeah. And I don't know what, like, whether there would have been enough virus load, for example, I suppose you could argue. Because I did have one day in England in March last year where I was very ropey. Mm. Like, I was very ill. Yeah. And sort of shook it off. It was just like, oh, I don't know what that was because there wasn't really any COVID supposed to be in England at the time. Right. And got on with the rest of my trip and came home and still had a bit of a cough. So there's like... I could see how it might have been. I still don't think it was. 
Hmm. And yeah, I'll gladly take the federal government's opportunity to win $5 off Sarah Price. So the Price is Right thinks the test was wrong, doesn't oh, she? Oh, look at you. Work, mm. work, sh- sculpted that one over there. I like that. Uh, well. I like that. That's very good. That's almost like my federal government joke. Uh, two questions mm. about your test. Yes. Um, elapsed time. How long did it take? Because oh. it, it looked like that was a, a absolute struggle to, to milk your finger with, what was it, four or five dabs of blood they, you needed they on there? They wanted five, and they got four. Right. Because at the end of the fourth, I would just... Yeah, it, your finger was flat from squeezing it. Well, my finger was, it was trying. It's like, why are we still like the point is to stop bleeding? Why do you want me to carry on? My poor finger just didn't understand why it was being asked to keep doing this yeah. when ordinarily I ask it to stop as quickly as it can. I think the lighting changed in the video a bit. Looked like the sun was setting. Yeah. The, the sun background. came up again. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it took about twenty-five minutes. Oh wow! All told, like, and that's from very start to very end, from like opening the envelope, yeah, reading the instructions to like. Slamming the last <laughs> flex of blood you onto the couple. You weren't supposed to touch the card. I know, I know, I know. There were a couple of times where I was just like the drop was hanging, and I was just like, just <laughs> smushed it onto the card. I was like, yeah, you go. Ah, oh, these permanent residents. We can't trust It'll them be fine. to do a test yeah. properly. Uh, <laughs> and second, and uh, second question. Um, what was my second question? Oh, I've lost it now. Shoot. Uh, oh, yeah. Did did you feel? Did you feel, how did you feel about the, uh, the, the hypothetical that permanent residents are, are good enough to take their blood samples, but we can't, we can't have them voting? Yeah. <laughs> Come on. I hadn't actually thought of that. Yeah, it's, um, it is interesting where we draw our arbitrary lines. A little bit. Isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, like, well, always when, like, what the drinking age is versus what the military conscription age is yes. in certain instances and things like that. You're like, mm-hmm. all right, so hang on, we're giving them guns, but they're not allowed alcohol yet. I That's mean, right, yeah. It seems like, yeah, let's not give the people with guns alcohol, but at the same time, like, it seems very weird how we've decided on all these different ages. And also, we're all in the same country, and yet, in all 13 of the different places, the rules are different. Mm-hmm. Yeah, weirdos. Yeah. That's really strange. That's our like that's our southern influence there from the neighbors there. Super weird. So uh, yeah, we, we all got to be free, Ollie, uh, and <laughs> free to give blood to the federal government. And the, of course, the video attracted the usual commenters who were like, "Oh, it's just a plan to get your DNA." That's right. I'm, I'm pretty sure they've already got that if they want it somewhere. Yeah, well, and and you know, now we have more little Ollies running around, maybe with guns, maybe when they're eighteen. <laughs> Pausing to imagine <laughs> little ollies with guns running around. It's like, you know, would you rather fight a uh, hundred duck-sized horses or one horse-sized duck? Ah, uh, hmm. We'll think about that. Yeah. Okay. And that answer will come tomorrow on Mornings at the Cabin. Thank you for listening to the show, everybody. Have yourselves a lovely Monday and a wonderful rectangular February. Can't wait for Oval March. Thanks for listening. Check out more from the show at cabinradio.ca and by following the Mornings at the Cabin Facebook page.